In this video, we'll see how you can win over those around you with psychology, so you can influence without having to nag, beg, or fight. Whether you're selling an idea at work, asking a friend for help, or charming a day, these techniques will put you over the top to get a firm buy-in from others, so you're able to move forward together. I remember for many of my teenage years, I felt conflicted about learning psychology, especially when applied to persuasion. On one hand, I was really excited to learn what makes us tick as people, so I could influence the feelings, thoughts and actions of those around me. On the other hand, it felt quite taboo to learn to push people's buttons, especially those hidden in the subconscious. It took me quite a long time to realize that just like any skill, persuasion can be abused or used to do a lot of good. Persuasion can be used to twist arms for selfish reasons, but it just isn't worth the damage to your reputation, relationships, and self-respect. And so I really hope that you use the techniques in this video to empower those around you so they take action on the things that they really care about. I believe that if you have something good to share, then it is your moral duty to influence others. Junk food, laziness, and delusion sell themselves, but health, action, and truth need influential friends. Now, of course, there are many ways to influence others, and sometimes a more effortful negotiation is required in high-stakes situations. However, most of the time, I prefer to start with persuasion, which leverages psychology to influence effortlessly. Swaying the subconscious mind is not only easier than butting heads with the conscious mind, but persuasion also creates internal rather than external motivation, which is longer lasting and more empowering. I hope you're just as excited for our game of life today. Let's crack into it. Our light mode is to introduce scarcity. Limiting availability increases perceived value, which makes our case far more compelling. One easy way to do this is to place a time constraint, which creates a sense of urgency, just like how shops use limited time offers to urge buyers to make a purchase. Alternatively, you could use a quantity constraint, like how budget airlines show notifications that say one seat left at this price. One way to apply this to our lives is in striking up connections, whether in business or romance. If we can credibly signal that our offer to link up is limited because we have other great things going on in life, then people are much more likely to take your offer seriously. Scarcity is persuasive because it triggers an emotional response. When quantity is limited, it taps our subconscious association of scarcity and value, bypassing our rational mind to create a visceral desire. And when time is limited, it taps our loss aversion by linking inaction to potential loss, and so compels action. Let's say that you're shopping for shoes, and you chance upon a pair that catches your eye but isn't quite yet a conviction buy. You speak to the salesperson and she tells you that there is only one pair left in your size and it will likely be sold out by the end of the day. Even without any new information about the shoes, this single sentence changes both sides of your decision. On one hand, it encourages buying because the quantity constraint of one pair left makes the shoe seem more desirable. And on the other hand, it discourages walking away because the prospect of losing out the shoes if someone buys it triggers loss aversion. These create a persuasive case to buy the shoes all from a single effortless sentence. Our steady mode is to extend genuine favors. This might be a small gift or a helping hand and it works for two reasons. First, being genuine makes the other party like you more, which opens them up to persuasion. And second, favors induce reciprocity, which inclines the other party to say yes to you out of indebtedness. Now, this may sound pretty devious, but I want to be clear that reciprocity can be either used to build a mutually supportive relationship or abused for selfish one-off gain that destroys trust. Either way, reciprocity creates an overwhelming urge to return the favor, making persuasion effortless. 
But the really interesting thing about genuine favours is that it triggers reciprocity even if unsolicited and can lead to uneven exchanges. This means that we can proactively extend a small favour and then ask for a bigger one in return. A good example of this is luxury boutiques that offer free water bottles with one hand and then ask you to buy a $5,000 handbag with the other. To me, this works because reciprocity is rooted in the subconscious, which only perceives obligation and repayment without weighing one against the other. One easy way to apply this is to use the reject then retreat strategy. To do this, we start with a big ask that we expect to be rejected, then retreat to a smaller ask that we really want. If done properly, the concession you make by retreating to a smaller ask will be perceived as a genuine favour, inclining the other party to also make a concession by agreeing to the smaller ask out of reciprocity. Persuasion really doesn't get any easier than that. Our intense mode is to use the bandwagon effect. If we can show that others are already doing it, it becomes much easier to persuade someone to do the same. There are three ways we can do this. First, we can signal authority in the way we dress and speak, implying that others defer to us, so they should too. If we come across an expert speaking with conviction, using insider lingo, and dressing appropriately, we are much more likely to be persuaded by what they say. Alternatively, we can use social proof by pointing to people who are already demonstrating the desired behaviour. If you've ever used online reviews to decide where to eat or judge someone based on the friends they were with, then you felt the power of social proof. This is also one reason why sellers like to use brand testimonials and like to tell you that they have many interested buyers. But by far the most potent bandwagon effect is to prove to someone that they themselves is already aligned with the desired behaviour and is only taking the natural next step. This is one reason why Apple stores are designed around providing hands-on sessions so you see yourself as a user of Apple products, which naturally leads to you becoming a buyer of Apple products. One of the easiest ways to apply this is to use a yes ladder, where you get the other party to say yes to a small ask and then to progressively bigger asks. This gets them to see themselves agreeing with you and so become more likely to continue agreeing. For example, if you want to convince your partner to go out for a nicer meal than normal, your ladder might look something like this. Hey, by the way, we have plans this weekend to visit your friends, right? Yep, we are. Oh great, I can't wait. We probably should also spend some time where it's just the two of us. Yeah, that makes sense. Remember the last time we had that really nice meal in town? Wouldn't it be nice to do something similar? Yeah, that would be nice. How about you look for a nice place this weekend and I'll find a nice bottle that we can bring. Sounds good. Without influence, even the best ideas will just die on our lips. So if you've got something great to share, I hope these techniques amplify the positive impact you have on those around you. Whether you are introducing scarcity, extending favours, or using the bandwagon effect, I trust you will use persuasion wisely to help others take action on the things that they really care about. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thumbs if you liked it and subs if you loved it. See you in the next one.